What's up? YT? What are we doing today? YT? Sure. Uh, we are building trusses. Essentially. So I searched around on the YouTube a little bit. I didn't see a whole lot about this, but uh, essentially what we have here is we have a garage. The garage was originally conventionally built with rafters, with the ridge beam, with collar ties, which are in the upper one third with rafter ties. You can see they're every four feet up top, there's uh, a collar tie and then a rafter tie. The rafter ties keep the building outside walls from blowing out and collar ties keep the roof from opening. If there was like a draft that came in the door, it would keep this together. So I called my inspector from my local area and essentially asked him, hey, I wanna put a drywall ceiling in here. Uh, what would you recommend? on how to hang a drywall ceiling. Like, do I have to take the two by sixes that are here out and go to two by eights or what do I have to do? And he said, is the building within 10 feet of another building? For us, we are 10 feet, six inches. So we are outside of the 10 feet. So he said, I don't have to hang any five eights rock anywhere. I can hang half inch on the ceiling. I can hang half inch on the wall that has the house 10 and a half feet away. Then he said, because I'm hanging half inch, if I were to build essentially this, I could hang the ceiling from it. So what we have going on is we have the original rafters, the collar ties, and then there was rafter ties every four feet. What we've done with his permission be able to hang a ceiling and throw a blown in insulation up here is we've hung at the building is 24 feet deep so these are 24 foot two by sixes there's eight feet from the end wall to this two by four eight feet across the middle and eight feet across the or across the other end wall so what we're putting in is we've got two by fours and these are all going to get um half inch osb lamination that's a foot tall so it'll be you know five and a half inches here and whatever's left. They're gonna get a little uh, OS or a little PL PL premium. We're gonna glue them on and nail them. There'll be four nails on the bottom, four nails on the top, both sides to sandwich that joint together. They go up and they fasten to the rafter, and that is enough to hang the drywall from the ceiling and the insulation from the ceiling. So. Working with the 24 foot two by sixes is kind of a pain in the ass, but with it being at eight feet like this, we're able to, when I fasten it, when I attach this temporarily, we're able to you know pick this up to where it's planed out underneath and then I nail it off at the top. So this is what uh, the inspector said to do for my area. Obviously everything is different all over the place. So take that with a grain of salt and my only advice if you were doing a project like this is to call the building inspector in your area, talk to him about your project and what you want to do, and you should be able to come up with a solution. Um, so yeah, that's that. Uh, we took it a little step further, and he didn't say that we necessarily needed to put in all those bridging between here, um, but it really tightens everything up, especially with the 24-foot lumber, so we went ahead and cut bridging that we're also installing as, as we go. Um, and then the last piece that we're gonna install once everything is done is we're gonna install our strong backs and we're gonna fasten them. It'll be a two by four that sits on, end, or on edge this way. Um, I don't know, on its side this way. So the two by four will come out, you know, it's three and a half inches, inch and a half back. It'll fasten across and we're gonna tie it to all of our bridging and to all of our um, ceiling joists and then to each end wall and then there'll be a lap in the middle of seven feet so um, it should keep our end walls from doing anything this way right now that end wall is a little bit out of out of plumb and this one is pretty much still plumb but when we get all of our bridging cut and we get our strong backs in we'll be able to throw a ratchet strap literally from one wall to the other wall that's where we have these Two by, there's a two by six mounted there, another two by six oh, mounted there. 
Screw that. Um, that's what we'll use to uh, pull the end walls plumb, uh, just because the old stuff here that was holding everything together, there was two rows that's already been pulled. This is our last couple pieces. Um, you know, the end walls are loose right now. So once we get our strong backs put back in, that'll keep our end walls nice and tight and our bridging will help keep everything nice and tight and the whole system should be really nice. Um, I don't know if I, there's only six feet between the bottom of the collar ties and the top of the rafter ties. I don't think in this situation, um, you know, it kind of looks like we're gonna throw an attic up here. I'm not comfortable with that unless we went up to like a two by, a two by eight ceiling joist and had some maybe thicker pieces here, like two by sixes that we had plated on and stuff. So this won't be, there won't be any storage up here. We're just gonna blow in insulation and then heat the lower half. So that is how we are framing in, um, and changing from a conventional non-heated garage, conventional framing, four foot on center rafter ties, four foot on center collar ties, to be able to hold drywall underneath. And, you know, that, that's a pretty common renovation, I'd say. Your thoughts? Not much. As long as the building inspector says it's fine, then it's probably fine. So that's what we do. I think that's it. I have nothing else to say. I'm gonna keep framing. We've beat the halfway point. So thanks for tuning in. We're signing off.